When Saladin was 26 years old, during this time the Fatimids were ruling Egypt, and the Crusaders were occupying the eastern shore of the Mediterranean. Then an internal conflict occurred between the Fatimids themselves. The Fatimid vizier fled from Egypt, seeking help from the king of Damascus. The king of Damascus agreed to help him and prepared an army led by Asad al-Din, and Saladin was part of this army. The army marched to Egypt and succeeded in controlling the situation, achieving revenge for the Fatimid vizier, whose son was killed during this conflict. After the Fatimid minister returned to his position again, instead of thanking Asad al-Din for the help, he decided to betray him, asking the Crusaders to help him in that. Under constant pressure from the Crusader Kingdom of Jerusalem in the attack on Asad al-Din, he was forced to withdraw to the Levant. Fearing that the Crusader forces would penetrate further into the country, they prepared the army again under the leadership of Asad al-Din and under him Saladin. In the Giza desert, the three armies meet, the army of Asad al-Din, the army of the Crusaders, in addition to the army of the Fatimids. In the heart of the army, Saladin leads them. Contrary to custom, Asad al-Din assumed command of the right wing as a strategy to try to outflank them. The battle went exactly as Asad al-Din wanted. The Crusaders and Fatimids focused on the heart of the army, while Asad al-Din surrounded them from the right. Asad al-Din won this battle, and Saladin was able to capture one of the leaders of the Crusader army. But do not forget that Egypt is still under the rule of the Fatimids, which still puts them in danger. They knew that the city of Alexandria hated the Fatimid ruler, so they headed there. And indeed, the city opened its doors to them without any resistance. The Fatimids besieged the city harshly, and people began to get hungry and sick. Asad al-Din decided to sneak out of the city with some of his soldiers, leaving Saladin to lead the city in an attempt to make the Fatimid armies pursue him. But the Fatimids realized that besieging the city was a priority. This siege ended with an agreement between Asad al-Din and the Crusaders. The agreement stipulated that the two armies would leave the country and that the people of Alexandria would not be punished for their assistance to Asad al-Din. Sometime later, when the Fatimid vizier failed to pay the royalties to the Crusaders, they began to wreak havoc in Egypt, which made the Fatimid vizier request the help of the king in Damascus. Yes, again. But this time will be different. Trust me, they have learned their lesson. The army prepared again and headed to Egypt. The Crusaders learned that the army was moving to Egypt, so they tried to set a trap for them on the way, but Asad al-Din knew about it, so he avoided them and continued heading to Egypt. The funny part is that when the Crusaders found out about this, they simply left, leaving the Fatimid vizier and Asad ad-Din's army to figure it out. Remember the last time the Fatimid vizier had the support of the Crusaders, but this time he was completely alone. He tried again, promising Asad al-Din to pay him for his troubles. But he never did, which was not a surprise at all. Asad al-Din had had enough of him already. He arrested him, executed him. Then Asad al-Din became the vizier of Egypt, in other words, ruler of Egypt. Well, that's it for today, folks. Leave a like and comment and stay safe.